I'm Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas, and the next lesson is about putting together shoulder seams on the knitting machine. Now you may not realize it, but you can use the knitting machine to do all kinds of seaming, and this is an example of that. Here is a sample that is supposed to represent a shoulder. This would be the neck, and then here's the shoulder slope and this would be the front shoulder, it would be the front right shoulder. And then here's a sample that is to represent the back right shoulder. So see these are going to need to be seamed together right here. Of course purple yarn is waist yarn. They need to be seamed here. Now I could kitchener these together and I often do. However, if this is a sweater with a sleeve, the sleeve is hanging here and it's creating weight and it tends to pull the shoulder seam out of position. And shoulder seams don't look good if they aren't in the right place on the body. So you need some reinforcement in this seam. And many people do this particular seam on the knitting machine. Now there's a way that I like to do it and there's a way that I've seen a lot of other people like to do it. So now remember in sewing, knitting too, the right sides get seamed together. So it's going to go on like this. I'm going to put this piece on the knitting machine first. And what I'm going to do is take a transfer tool and pick up the stitches and put them on needles. And I just have the waist yarn hanging above. In fact, I could fold it over this way. I think that that maybe is a little easier to see. When I get to a place where I did a wrap as part of the shaping, I pick up both loops. And you just have to take a little extra time and care to get both loops. I stopped the camera and now I've started it again. I have this whole row of, of loops hanging on the machine and I am of course removing the waist yarn because it's just in the way. So there's one shoulder on the machine. Now what is Many people do this shoulder seam and they like it because this one doesn't stretch out at all. So here's how you do it. You bring the needles all the way towards you. Now the latches, if you can see them, the latches are about here. The stitches are all behind the latches. Then you take the other shoulder piece. Now this, since the right sides are going to be together, now the wrong side is facing me and I'm just going to pick these up. I'm going to place them inside the hooks of the knitting machine needles. They are not going to go behind the latches. These need to be in the hooks all the way across. Make sure I get both loops in each instance where I did a little short rowing and I made an extra loop. Now after I get just a few of these on, you can see how they want to come up and come off the needles. So this is a good situation for a claw weight. That'll hold them down and they'll stay where they need to be. Here's a situation where I have two loops and I want to get them both. And working on a cross, getting all of these inside the latches. These are down at the ends of the hook. Okay. Before you do the next step, it's a good idea to just inspect and see if you have all the extra loops picked up. 
And while I'm inspecting, I will often just pull the waste yarn off because I'm finished with it. So there goes the waste yarn. Now I use my needle pusher and I start to push these back. Now, do you observe as I push them back that the latches are all closing? So I push them back. I just keep pushing and pushing. The latches close and the stitches now, a couple of them didn't work exactly right, but generally speaking, the stitches have pulled through the stitch behind them. This one, not so much. So, let me just get it to do what it should do. So, you see the stitches have pulled through the stitch behind them, and I can see right here where I didn't catch the loop the way I needed to catch the loop, so I'm going to fix it. Now what that does is that creates kind of a tight edge and then it can be cast off whatever way you prefer. And I rather prefer to cast off using that quick little chain edge that I often use. This isn't exactly the same yarn, but I'll use it. I turn the machine very, very loosely as I described in the cast off lessons for the loop through loop cast off and then I knit across. So I'm knitting all these with a kind of a long loop. And then I'm going to cut the thread. And then I will use the latch tool to bind off. First I bring the needles to E position. Bring the loops back. I still have a claw weight on this. I'm going to put the claw weight down here and all of this between these two needle beds so that it doesn't get away from me and slip off the ends of the needles. And this way it will control the knitting a lot better. So I just do this loop through a loop cast off at this point. But you can do any cast off that you prefer, whatever makes you happy and comfortable. Most people do a latch tool cast off for this. It doesn't matter. You could do one of the tapestry ones. I always practice this on a swatch before I do an actual garment because the tension is important. I want to fiddle with it a little bit, make sure I have the tension correctly. And this is what the shoulder seam looks like. It's not as invisible, of course, like a Kitchener stitch shoulder seam, but this is a sturdy shoulder seam and the weight of a sleeve won't pull this out 